Good morning and welcome for a break from your regularly scheduled programming of DCS World content because I felt that, hey, we might as well try something that's closely related. As you have seen the past few days, I've done a little bit of Microsoft Flight Simulator content with mostly odd birds such as the Saab 17 and the SK-61 Bulldog. But I got this uh, before the New Year's, so I felt that I might as well take a look at it. This, of course, being the Heathler and India Fox Echo F-14 Tomcat for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And as you can see, we're also standing on top of the USS Forestal, off the coast of uh, the, well, that would be the eastern seaboard of the United States. And our flight route will take us to Washington, D.C. From there, we might do a supersonic hop up to New York, depending on what landmarks we want to see and how long we keep this flight up for. Now, I want to add a disclaimer here. I got this F-14 as thank you for doing some work with the AJS-37 Vegan Red Flag campaign for Heat Blur. Uh, work that they included into a patch, and amongst other things, this was one of the things they offered me as thank you for that. So, I feel I need to disclose that, and every reaction I make should be seen in that light. But without further ado, I feel that, um, yeah, speaking in English, that's actually a bit weird now, since I've been tuning my channel to be Swedish for quite some time now. I felt that, hey, let's just get this one international, because unlike the other two birds, this one is most likely going to be interesting for an international audience as well. So I have some flight experience with the Towncat, but that's all in DCS. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this bird relates to that. So the first things we're gonna do is obviously check ourselves to be ready to fly. We're gonna check so the Jester is back there. Jester actually talks in this module, by the way. And he can also eject from the aircraft. I had that happen to me. I flew way too low in uh, one instance, and he decided we were going down. So, let's see here if I can remember the procedure since the tanker war campaign. Uh, I'm supposed to kneel, ain't I? Uh, yeah, there we have it, no strut, going for the kneel, and we might as well check if we are, we're not really that close to the, oh, oh, that's awkward. Thankfully, the, apparently, all of the DCS things, all of the DCS things you are used to having to do, uh, flaps up. So, every DCS thing you are used to having to do to launch from the carrier are out the window in Microsoft Flight Simulator. All I had to do was basically to um, release the brakes. Once the brakes were released, once the wings... Uh, yeah, we should be good on that. Uh, checked wings, check wings. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I wasn't really ready to get launched lo like that. I have never actually done carrier operations in Microsoft Flight Simulator before, so... I'm going to do a small pass to carrier just to see if one of the easter eggs from... from... Um, DCS is in this. And we gotta keep a those tabs on the instruments. So... No, 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 don't worry, Jester, we're not gonna hit the ground. Don't eject. Huh, it's not worried about what the CEO will think. Uh, so let's reduce our throttle a bit to make sure that we have the fuel quantity required. Bird feels perfectly fine. I mean, it's not as intricate as in DCS, but I mean, it's pretty much 
on point in all the other regards. The graphics are also pretty nice, and since I have nowhere, I don't have no idea where I'm going, so we are actually going to turn on uh, the direction here for Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, which is over 300 kilometers, uh, rather two, more than 200 kilometers away. It's a little bit silly of me if to try and contradict what actually can be read on the screen by both you and me. But I feel like we should uh, try and increase the speed somewhat. We ain't gonna do a supersonic hop. But uh, we might try some maneuvers while en route. I also feel that you don't need to trim. Uh, this Tomcat as much as you need the DCS one, which is interesting because that's that is something I feel like Microsoft Flight Simulator sometimes can be more aggressive with, depending on the aircraft. But this bird in particular uh, seems to be doing fairly well. Uh, looks good too. Flies reasonably well. Uh, I'm actually gonna check something, and that is... No. Uh, apparently... Uh, let's see. Nav mode. That's the takeoff mode. Uh, let's pick the cruise mode for the heads-up display. The, this is all the kind of stuff I really should have done really before takeoff, but never mind that. North Atlantic looking good this time of year, and we are closing fairly fast with Washington. Washington All right, let's have a look on the ATC. We got the handoff done. Uh, we got a decent fuel state going on here, so we can we, we can keep up the speed, and we should ha be feet dry in a couple of moments. And uh, we can see the coast ahead. Jester, you still back there, buddy? Good, fuel thank 9, you. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. So. Our first objective here is to head on to Washington, and once over Washington, our uh, goal will be to um, do some sightseeing, and then we'll decide if we're gonna land or if we are going to proceed. Uh, we're gonna pull back a little bit on the throttle, and we're gonna do a roll. Nose up. The nice thing about having this display on screen is to check the accuracy of your roll here. And rolling the aircraft feels a little more... more I mean, every f <coughs> feeling in terms of flight controls is very tricky to describe. First of all, I have never flown a real Tomcat, so I can't really say, Oh, this is just our, the real thing. I can only give you my impression of immersion. Meaning that if I feel like I'm flying the real thing, that is essentially the feeling we are going for. Uh, but in this case, I have to say, I, I can only do comparisons with the DCS version. And in comparison with the DCS version, it is uh, they have done an astounding job to try and make sure that the feeling in DCS is replicated in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And uh, I can only say that, that there is some stellar job by both Heepla and India Fox Echo in that regard. So, we have made somewhat of a landfall. I am not current enough in... Uh, in... Um, geography of the United States to know exactly where I'm flying over, but it looks like an interesting area of swamps and 
the basically coastal land that doesn't seem all too developed, if I'm gonna be honest. Not that it matters. I was about to say, is that a golf course, but it wasn't a golf course. Of course, uh, just like with DCS, this is an aircraft you need to keep your tabs on, because if you don't keep your tabs on this plane, it's going to kill you. And uh, you don't want that, obviously. But more than that, you don't want to try and just rip her apart in the air, because uh, that's an easy thing to do. And uh, in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, you don't get that satisfying little uh, image. Yay! Tomcats of the Potomac! Vow upon the Confederacy. Mm, sorry, Union Gang colors showing. Let's see, fuel is 8,000, so we are burning fuel in our rather alarming rate here. But it seems like we are uh, heading towards Washington, D.C. in a fairly nice rate of closure. Especially seeing that the Ronald Reagan National Airport is not that far away. Fuel 8,000. Uh, copy that, Jester. A few late thousand confirmed. Yeah, considering the rate we're burning fuel, we'll either have to make a landing to refuel, uh, or we will just have to make a full stop landing. I don't see that if we are going to continue to fly at these high speeds that... Oh, right, I forgot something. Uh, you see this? right here. Uh, we haven't even touched the afterburner yet. I actually forgot that a little bit uh, of a detail, because in DCS my control scheme is set up differently. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can remember... yeah. Uh, you have to right click in order to unlock the afterburner. And now we only did that on one throttle. So that's going to be tricky. There we go. Both throttles are now unlocked for afterburner. I say again, Jester, prepare for ludicrous speed! Do you think Joe Biden's gonna be angry if we Sonic the White House? I mean, I'm just asking, do you think he's gonna be mad? Oh, you're, yeah, right. I forgot. Uh, it, it is very easy. It, if you are going too fast in this aircraft, uh, you might lose control. Going too fast in this aircraft means you might lose control, and that is just what happened. Uh, copy that. Uh, having just in the back seat, reporting things like fuel state and stuff. It's a nice touch. It's a really nice touch. And I feel that they have... Jester is transitioning to his somewhat civilian duties well. And uh, I'm gonna say... That having him there is also very, very nice. Uh, I was... I didn't really know how they would be able to implement Jester in terms of... Uh, gameplay or simulation, since his job is essentially to find enemy aircraft. But uh, I still feel like they did a fairly decent job with him. And like I said, he can eject if he feels like it, which is frankly hilarious every time it happens. Uh, because when I fly in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's usually like sighting tours or challenge tours where I fly under bridges and stuff like that. And if there's something Jester is very sensitive to, it's flying too low. So, half of the time when you fly low, and especially if you have an object in front of you, he's just gonna decide, no, 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 my life's not worth flying with this idiot, and he's gonna bail out. I think that's the Potomac right ahead, or should be at any rate. Uh, increase speed somewhat, uh, keep your tabs on. 
the Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, at any rate, is uh, close to most of the landmarks you want to see. So we're going to try and take a tour over the city first. But we might also uh, head in over the river and check if uh, there are any other sites worth it there or any bridges to fly over. I don't really know what airport that's supposed to be, so I'm not even going to guess. But uh, we can always pop up the map if we're really that curious, but we're not. But yeah, the feeling of flying the F-14 in the Microsoft Flight Simulator, and especially flying it over areas of the world that you that you know and love. Well, I've never been to Washington, so I don't know it. And frankly, I'm not, not sure I love Washington either. There you go. Uh, but uh, the feeling of having what is essentially a DCS-style bird in this kind of environment is really fucking cool. Where's Joker Fuel? Uh, copy that, Joker Fuel. That means 7,000. But we are pretty close to Washington, so that shouldn't be a problem. It would be a problem if we are continuing to um, New York, but uh, I'm not really sure we're gonna do that. Also, the wear and tear on the as you have probably noticed by now, uh, the wear and tear and uh, the scratches on the cockpit is not as severe as uh, it could be on the DCS version, but that makes sense since you're most likely flying... I mean, if you're gonna fly this thing in Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's most likely going to be like the impression of a museum bird or something like that, so... Yes, Potomac Control have us on approach. That looks like to be a power line, not a bridge. And uh, Washington Ronald Reagan the, what, na National Airport is not that far off. Sweet, we're gonna. Potomac Approach Alpha Bravo. All right, so we should have the city coming up right ahead of us. At least if everything goes as planned. Following that, we are gonna have to uh, slow down a bit and uh, most likely also uh, find a decent runway to land. With the fuel at about 5,000 and 4,000 being bingo, and this bird liking to drink fuel like I drink Coca-Cola, I'm fairly convinced there is no sustainable way for us to actually reach New York. Especially not as I would make it a very quick flight. I would ensure that a New York flight with the Tomcat would probably be a very fast one. We're at our fixed point. Yeah, it looks like the track AR doesn't really respect the boundaries either, but that's a common Microsoft Flight Simulator problem, so I'm not going to give them grief over that one. Coming in over the city now, we have uh, the airport on our left hand side, and we can start, I think we have at least one of the buildings we are looking at, looking for right over there, at least it's white and have like a sphere thing, it might be something Washington that we're looking Tower, for. Alpha, Bravo, two, zero, zero. Is three miles southeast, 1,100 feet. We are at a new point. Uh, Fly straight in runway tree, tree two zero zero. That would be the Congress, right? Two 
5000. Copy on fuel 5000, we still have some time for tech for the sightseeing part of the tour then. Uh, I haven't really checked any maps of the Washington area, so this will all be visual. But it's also why we are climbing, to keep our eyes open for landmarks. There we have um, the Washington Monument, and if you follow the Washington Monument, you should get to the White House, right? Somebody's probably gonna tell me if I'm wrong anyway, so... And we're gonna find out the answer quickly enough. Uh, okay, so Washington Monument. I think we have the White House right over there. Emphasis on think, because I do not know. But yeah, that looks like the White House right over there. Uh, check wings, since we are bleeding speed a little bit, we might actually want to switch our wings into override extended position for the landing, but we also want to be careful on our approach, so we might actually do another turn and then head on to the longer one of the runways. Yeah, that looks like the Pentagon right there. You should really trust me close to the Pentagon. I didn't realize the Pentagon was that close, honestly. I don't really know if that is the actual Pentagon. I'll have to check it on the map later, but if it is, I'm, I'm very surprised it is that close to the, to the city and the White House. Copy that, Washington. Clear to land runway tree, tree two, zero, zero. All right, so let's. Fu that should be runway three three, but we have to check the numbers as well. So trim her a little bit in, and then we'll switch the wings to. I want to extend our wings, making sure we. Do the override. Override and yeah, that doesn't work. Sir, I got a master caution back here. Yeah, you got a master caution back there because I'm touching things I shouldn't. Uh, that would be why, just sir. Uh, I don't, I'm not really sure there's anything I can do about the wings at the moment, so just keep them on. A, just keep them on automatic and hope that the automatic system decides to extend them for us in front in lieu of the landing. Yeah, I am very rusty with the Tomcat, so you'll have to forgive me on that score. Hopefully the wings will start to act up, or uh, we are going to be in a series of trouble as soon as our speed hits the... Yeah, that's bingo fuel. I know, Jester, you don't have to tell me. I can see the bingo fuel right there. Ah, looks like we'll have to see New York another day. But yeah, this plane has a little bit of uh, spirit to her. You have to treat her right, and if you don't, like I do, uh, then, uh, or rather, like I do not, uh, you... Bingo. Yeah, I know. You have to uh, not really struggle against her, because it's not, she's not really that difficult. But you, it is a plane you have to work with, rather than against. So, let's... Yeah, there we go. Wings are extending now. Flaps are extending now. Check spoilers. Where are my spoilers? 
I want both spoilers. Gear down. This is gonna be a sloppy landing. I hope Joe Biden isn't looking out from his window. I hope no naval joint of joint chiefs or chiefs of staff. I think that's the same thing, honestly. I'm not really versed in United States command structure. Uh, but anyway, I hope they're not looking out the window to realize that there is uh, somebody botching a Tomcat landing on Ronoray or Washington National Airport. Because if they do look out the window and decide that I am disgracing the... Oh, this is the wrong runway. This is not the runway we wanted. This is absolutely not the runway we wanted. Uh, this is going to be tricky as hell, because I don't really know if I should... should or rather, I know I should abort. I know. I truly know. In my heart. Yeah, I know. Thank you, Jester. Thank you, Jester. Sync rate, sync rate, sync rate. I know in my heart I should abort. Also, this is the wrong runway. We were clear for runway 33. This is 19. Tower is gonna be pissed at us. One two one decimal seven two zero zero. Goodbye. All right, so we're on the ground, and I think the reason, uh, let's check, we don't want to kneel, we want to extend a bit. Yeah, it's not the best landing ever, but it's not also the, not the worst landing ever, so I'll take that with me for the next flight, but yeah. If you are looking for a realistic Tomcat simulation and you don't feel like PCS is your thing, then I can wholeheartedly recommend this, uh, this aircraft for uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. However, if you don't have Microsoft Flight Simulator and are just looking for the Tomcat experience, as it were, then I would recommend you to look into F-14 Tomcat for PCS. Because then you basically pay for the PCS module, and uh, you don't have to pay the base game. But it also depends on what kind of flying you want to do. If you want to use the Tomcat, what she's made for, fighting, everything like that, then sure, go for it. But if you're already into Microsoft Flight Simulator, and just want another really well-made bird in your hangar, you can't go wrong with this one. It's the F-14 Tomcat, for Christ's sake. 